Hi, it's Leontine from Little Lovely Crafts. In today's card, these fish take a little swim thanks to the magic iris. Once the octopus moves, you can see a little fish coming up from behind him. And that big blue fish with the light on his head is almost looking like he is going to help take the picture. I tried to use the colors from the current Lawn Phonetics challenge. To save some time I already die cut all the necessary parts for this card. As you can see I die cut an extra piece of the bottom magic iris add-on because I'm going to uh, die cut a hill from it. And I used lawn fun cardstock for the circles and thicker cardstock for the rest of the parts. I'm going to show you what I used. I used the magic iris and of course the add-on, ocean shelfie, the fish from mermaid for you. I've used You Are Sublime. I've used the stitched hillside borders. And I also used a large stitched rectangle stackable and the Say What Christmas Critters for the little speech bubble. You'll see me use them later on in the video. I will use antique linen, tea dye and brushed corduroy to make the little sand at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, first I'm just going to use my lightest color and build it up to the darkest color. And once those inks are on there, I'm going to put it in my uh, little splatter box and splatter the same colors, but not distress oxide, but distress ink on there. And now I move on to the magic iris parts. I'm going to ink up these backgrounds in blue shades. And I thought I was going to use the same combination I used for Mama Elephant card I did a while ago. With speckled egg, peacock feathers and chipped sapphire. But I decided to change up the colors by replacing the peacock feathers with salty ocean. By the way... I made sure that the circle that was cut out with the Magic Iris add-on stayed in place with some purple tape. Because you always see a little bit of an edge from those rings that you use, I am going to ink them up in the same way as I did with my sausages. So speckled egg and then some salty ocean on top. You don't need to ink up the entire ring because you're only going to see a little edge. Since all of the parts are covered in ink, it's time to use my mixture of liquid stardust and water. I'm splattering it on there and picking up the excess with a paper towel. And now it's time to do some coloring. If this doesn't interest you, you can skip ahead to 12 minutes and 8 seconds. For those of you who like to see how I color, um, I changed it up a little bit. I used to color from dark to light, but now I use my middle color first, then I put on my darkest color, go back with the middle color and blend everything out with my lightest color. 
As usual, I'm placing the cap in a spot where you can see the color that I'm using. And I will also list all of the colors down below in the description and on my blog. Thank you. 
The camera didn't film me coloring the shell, but I used W2 and W4. I die cut a rectangle with the largest large stitched rectangle stackables and I used fake tan. I also die cut the little tab and the arrow out of the same color cardstock. And now I'm just putting everything together like Kelly Marie showed in the Lawn Fawn video for the Magic Iris. To stop the sausages from moving I like to use a little purple tape uh, to, to keep it together and I take it off once the entire thing is done. You will see me fold those little tab thingies from the sausages, but you can skip that step because folding them means it prevents the magic iris from working properly with the acetate behind it from the fish. With the magic iris part done, I can put the car together. I am first attaching my little sand hill or sand bank and then I am going to focus on the magic iris itself. I want the little circle to be in the right spot. What I did was I drew a green line on the edge of the larger piece and on the edge of the circle so I know how to position it. And I'm using a bit of purple tape to keep it in place while I glue it on there. I hope it makes sense, but I think if you watch the video, you know what I mean uh, and you can see how I did it. I'm using tape runner again to attach the front panel to my iris part. I'm using the tab to line it up perfectly with the rest of the card. To lift the front panel up, I'm going to use foam squares and I used two layers of two millimeter thick foam squares for this. I am making sure that wherever I'm placing them, it isn't in the way of the mechanism. And here comes the tricky part, making the octopus move. I've got some firm acetate and I am placing a little strip behind one of the sausages. To do that I am using a double sided score tape and I am attaching it to the bottom sausage and then I can just sort of try and find out how my octopus should be attached to make him move uh, in a more natural way because I don't want him hanging upside down after I open the magic iris. Once you know how high your image is going to be, you can trim the acetate to the desired length. And I'm using foam tape to lift him up from above the magic iris uh, hole. And I used two millimeter thick uh, foam square for this. And I also used, I think it's one millimeter thick foam sheet. And I cut it into a little square to fit on my foam square that was already on there. You don't want to press down on the foam yet because you might want to move him and if you press down you might damage your image once you try to pull it off. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to repeat the same process for the angler fish. And once I was positioning him, I got the idea to get him close to the camera so it almost seems like he's trying to help press the button. The acetate seemed to get caught behind one of the sausages, but luckily after I attached the anglerfish that problem went away. The next tricky bit is attaching the front panel to the card base exactly above that circle that we glued on earlier. Phew! All of the hard parts are done. Now I can go on and decorate the rest of the card with the images that I stamped, colored and die cut earlier. I want the lobster to say smile because he's taking a picture and I already had the sentiment of course because that's on the ocean shelfie set and I wanted it to be on a speech bubble so I searched among all of my stamps and I found out that the say what Christmas critters speech bubble is perfect for it so I grabbed some vellum from Lawn Fawn and I heat embossed the smile sentiment on there with white embossing powder. And once it was dry, I used the dye to cut out the speech bubble. And then I attached it to my card. Now I only put a little bit of glue on the back of uh, the speech bubble where the sentiment is. That way you don't see any glue. As a finishing touch, I am making bubbles with my glossy accents. Make sure it doesn't get in the way of those moving images. 
And then the last step is making a card base for it. I'm using white cardstock and making it the same size as my orange panel. So this is my finished card. I hoped you liked watching my video and that you got inspired to make something like this yourself. Give my video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon to get notified when my next video is up. Have a wonderful day and I hope I will catch you next time. Bye!